We're really chuffed to be invited to speak at the Brighton Digital Marketing Festival. There's so much going on in the digital marketing space, with things like the continued growth of social media networks, the changes going on in search, and the things that are being done in content marketing. These are the sort of areas that we work in, in White Hat Media. And we're going to be talking today and telling you all sorts of tips and giving you hints and giving you guidance based on the experience that we have working in the area. So the premise of the talk today is basically how search and social have finally kind of acknowledged one another and, you know, they've actually embraced one another. Okay, so once upon a time, SEO was very much about title tags, H tags, alt image tags, keywords, and anchor text. It basically involved a gig into, in, the, in your office as part of your marketing team, um, and who would basically do all the on-page optimization. And of course, you've got the second part of SEO, which is the links. The same person doing the on-page would most often do the off-page stuff, going through directories, going through forums, and doing the whole affiliate um, ex link exchange systems. Then there was also a PR called PageRank. Um, people would have competitions about what rank their site was compared to another's. Um, it's, you know, it's no longer the case now. And all this time, as, um, as search was getting bigger, people were no longer surfing the web, they were actually searching the web. So Google was getting stronger, Yahoo was kind of taking a dip, but generally the whole kind of premise online was searching, not actually surfing. Um, but as, as these geeks understood the uh, algorithm better, um, Google actually... Um, they almost created a rod for their own back. It was all about links. It was all about black hat tactics, cloaking and um, fooling the, the search engine into thinking that they should be ranked higher. And so this meant a lot of rubbish um, started to be delivered to the users. But while the search was growing, so was social, but it was almost encased within particular platforms like Bebo, like MySpace, um, and obviously the prevalence of Facebook. Um, but now there's a much stronger push on, on content. Content is very much a, um, the whole part of SEO, the new kind of 2.0 SEO, if you will. Um, but obviously with social, the whole um, encasing of social is around content and a team that create content. So with this, you've got a team who, um, you know, who work on your SEO efforts. There's lots of stages. There's... Um, you know, you've got the initial analysis, your keywords, then you've got your on-page optimization, then you've got your social optimization on-page, then you've got the likes of the article submission and your link popularity that goes with it. But then if you look, the second stage, the real kind of where you see the impact of, of your efforts, your initial endeavours, are actually content, which is obviously where social media comes in. Any idea what this number 27 could be? This is actually the, um, the number of reported algorithm updates since January from Google, from SEO Moz. So from January to August, we've had 27 changes in the, um, in the algorithm update, which obviously creates work for, for our teams. And, you know, it, it always keeps us guessing, always keeps us working. So the updates, they've come thick and fast. First, we've got, um, we got Panda very much focused on the, um, the farming sites where you could just throw a hold of a load of links, point into your website, hoping that it will bolster your, your SERP rankings. Then you had Penguin. This was very much on the over-optimization of websites, so keyword stuffing and things like that. And then you had Venice, which focused very much upon um, localized listings, so Google would look to deliver um, local companies as opposed to the large brands which they actually said, you know, the opposite of about a year ago. But centre stage, content. It's always been content for SEO. Um, and obviously with the, the migration of social and SEO, content has, ta has taken a, a much bigger role within the, um, within the ecosystem. 
And of course, you've got friends, the communication, the people that actually bind the, um, the actual listings and the, uh, the content together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to run through a case study um, for one of our clients, the gym group, about how we've actually used social media to, to actually leverage our, our existing SEO foothold, our, ex our existing success within Google and the other search engines to actually almost um, to add like another dimension within, within the ecosystem of, of search. For any of you who don't know, they're a low-cost contract um, budget gym chain, um, slowly growing across the, uh, the UK, London, Manchester and a few of the other major cities currently covered. Um, the real kind of USP for the gym group is that the whole joining process is online so you don't need to walk down to your local um, gym or your local authority um, leisure centre, fill out lots of paperwork, um, fill out a, um, a, a monthly contract. And of course, it's open 24 hours. You've got these little pods that open up. Um, yeah, they're very kind of sci-fi. They're really cool. And currently running Budget Gym of the Year. Um, to give you a bit of context where they were and where they've come from to where they are now, um, we started off with five gyms in 2009, um, slowly growing, bigger foothold in the UK. Um, we're expected to go to 50 gyms this, um, almost this time next year. Um, but if you can actually see the, the spike of traffic from 2011, which is approximately where the whole kind of surfing online switched to searching, that's where we really saw a growth in our internet traffic. And if you look at 2012, so you've got the, the merging of the, the SEO and the social, 2012 we expect a much higher jump in our Facebook fans as a result of the, um, the closer relationship that SEO and social have. So being completely online, with the exception of the bricks and mortar of the actual gym sites, um, SERP domination is, you know, that's, that's really the, the bread and butter of our, of our work. Um, we're, pretty, we're pretty good, we're quite fortunate in the um, fact that any kind of location-based keyword that we're targeting, we're actually um, we're pretty solid on. Um, I don't know if you can see it from the back, but if you just put in a search Jim Brighton, um, we'll, we'll be top. Um, as you can see, it's pretty competitive. This is a really competitive market. Um, every penny is scrutinised, but um, we've found that making sure that our organic listings are strong, bringing the, the, the biggest traffic. Um, to give you a, a bit of an idea and context behind our member demographic, predominantly between the age of 18 and 34, huge student um, um, growth across the last couple of years, where we've particularly focused on um, cities with, with a large student um, foothold. The, the demographic, they're socially savvy and socially active. Active being the real kind of um, important thing here. They're not the older generation who may be joining social media far quicker than the younger um, generation, but they're, they're, they actually want to get involved. They do like um, commenting on posts and they do like retweeting and favouriting updates that you make. Heavy smartphone usage. Um, we've seen our mobile traffic in the last year increase by over 300%. And almost a third of our members have never been a member of a gym before. This is because either they've been priced out or they've, ne they've never been really kind of... Um, a gym's never been accessible to them. So as far as having social media as a tool to be able to shape a particular experience for, for new gym members, it's a really powerful thing that we have at our disposal. And people of all cultures, ethnicities and religions. Um, we generally are placed in areas where um, it's quite kind of impoverished. Um, and so people of all, all places around the world. So if we were to take a look at our actual insights data for our um, Facebook group, very similar to what we know our members are, 78.6% of our Facebook members are between the age of 18 to 34, which you, we would commonly expect. Um, this surprised us, us still. Um, it's roughly 50-50 between male and female members, but our, 
our Facebook fans are actually predominantly male, which ha does inevitably help us target particular content to them. Um, an average, this was looking over a, a year period, so August last year to August this year, um, average 202 members sign up via direct referral through Facebook, 80% of which is between 5 and 8 p.m. So once again, that helps us um, target particular updates. Okay, so why, why exactly are we looking at social media? Touched upon it earlier, all the time um, Google and, and, and Bing are telling us that tweets are being used as part of the, um, the signal process, it, it'd be daft for, for any one of us not to, um, not to consider using it. We of course don't know what impact, how much of an impact, but they have told us explicitly that they take social signals into account. Cast your minds back to those three previous updates, Panda, um, Penguin and Venice. The constant um, algorithm changes means we're constantly kind of running a thin rope and we, we, we really aren't in control of, um, of how much traffic we're actually going to be, um, be getting every month. Similar links, um, Google are feeding us the bullshit that they're protecting the, are we allowed to say that? Um, <laughs> But yeah, I've said it now. Yeah, they're feeding us the bullshit that, they, um, that they're protecting the users. Um, but yeah, you can get that data if you're running a, a PPC ad campaign. Um, so more and more data is being actually extracted from us as webmasters, as um, webmasters um, in, in times where you know, we, we actually need more, more data in, in an ever-increasing environment. So with that in mind, that, that with, with social, everything is open. And duplicated content with SEO, duplicated content is, you know, the worst, the worst thing that you can do with, with um, social media. We actually find um, posts that are actually um, of, of, a, um, of a subject that everyone has already a bit of an idea about will actually be engaged with far better than a, um, than a subject that people have no kind of invested, pr previous invested interest in. So duplicated content actually works far better in social than it does um, original. And it's less competitive. Um, within a Facebook timeline or a, a Twitter timeline, we are generally having to compete with, with people's friends, whereas within like the Google um, results page, we're having to compete with David Lloyd's, LA Fitness, Fitness First, um, all the other um, low-cost budget gym chains that are you know, they're, they're, they're throwing massive amounts of um, PPC budget in trying to outmuscle us from the top. So how do we do it? First of all, we took our site and we thought, right, if first of all, we've got to socially optimize it. So this meant making the site as, um, as shareable as possible. So on all of our blog updates, all of our news updates, we needed to implement um, the, like, the Twitter, buttons, the Google Plus buttons, and Facebook sh send, share, like, like, and you know, the ever-growing amount of buttons that are available. Um, and we also made sure that the, um, the Facebook integration was, was um, implemented throughout the joining process. So when someone's completed their membership, they're now a member of the gym, you actually get delivered a face pile. So they, they know who else of their friends are also a member of the, um, of the gym group. Once again, Google telling us that um, reviews and UGC makes up as part of their algorithm. So using our, um, our existing network, we ask them to review us on sites such as Yelp, Kype, um, Google Places slash local, um, which we know Google use because you can actually go to our, our local listings and, um, and actually see the benefit. Um, timing is everything. Um, you obviously, if you've got a miffed off um, customer, you do not want them reviewing you because they will give you a really low score. So generally, we try to target um, reviews kind of in the, keeping within the, the marital um, concept here, the honeymoon period of about a month. So they've been going to the gym a few times, they're feeling good, they're feeling fresh, and that's a really good, good time to kind of 
to nab them and say, look, if you're having a good time, can you review us? Um, we've, we've also had to optimize our site for mobile. Um, it was actually a, um, a responsive design. It wasn't a dedicated, um, because we actually found that um, repeat visits for mobile were far higher, because generally when you're, when you're on a mobile, you're going to be out with friends. Um, so you're going to be more social and more willing to, to tell someone of your experience. Um, we've run competitions. Um, to anyone who says competitions on social media don't work, are lying. They do. As long as you're offering something to your, to your existing network and your network's network, something of value and of interest, it will, um, it will generate a response. If you try to just offer them an iPad when, you're, you know, when you're, your demographic might not necessarily be interested in one, don't bother. So how exactly did, um, did our changes impact the site? Looking at the dates from August last year to August this year, um, incoming tweets have increased by 103%. Um, I should probably add that just through careful tweaks of looking at insights data, looking at rivals and look at, what, look at what they're doing and what they weren't doing, we've been able to, um, to look at gaps in the market and, and you know, basically look at exactly what they like to see. Um, Twitter followers have increased by 32%. Um, this is after I've, we've had like massive clear outs of you know, the, the, the spammy Twitter followers. Retweets are up 61%. Um, a particular favourite from, from our uh, members, they like the Monday motivation tweets. Um, I think half of that actually comes from one particular um, kind of portion of our editorial calendar. And click-throughs. Um, these are click-throughs that go directly to our site. I haven't included um, clicks that go to our Facebook page or where we've curated content and sending the user somewhere else, um, that's 36% increase just to our site. Visits volume, so this is referral traffic from Facebook to the Gym Group website, the gymgroup.com, is up 25%. Unique visitors are up 50%. New visitors are up 67%. And page views are up 14%. Now, I'm, I'm particularly impressed by the 14% figure because this means that the traffic that we're getting from social media is actually far better qualified than it was a year ago. So how exactly, what exactly did we do to achieve this? First of all, a seamless sign-off process. This means that you have your editorial calendar there, placed out, you know exactly what's going out on what platform and when. You know who it's going to, when, what they're going to do with it when they get it and who to pass it along to. Minimal stakeholder involvement, so you know you might have the one person creating it and the one person sending it, or you might have the one person creating it and sending it. Often you've got the um, and the legal types who like to muscle in and see if everything's, you know, runs along the board, if that forms part of your um, seamless sign-up process, then so be it. But just make sure that it's not a vote for committee, because sometimes with social, you really do have to smell what sells, and, you know, it's really kind of time-sensitive. You've got to have trust. So you've got to have trust within the sign-up process. You've got to have trust within the, uh, the editorial calendar. So you, you can't be jumping ahead of it. Sometimes you've got to smell what sells, but generally you use the editorial calendar as your kind of, um, you know, your, as your blueprint. And of course, you've got to have awesome content. You've got to understand what your audience want to see by looking at the insights, by looking at the virability and the reach um, data from each posts. 
you'll get a, a good general idea of, um, of actually what your network like to see. Thank you.